I am out here at the crack of dawn. The sun hasn't even fully risen yet. I've got a lot to show you. Let's get this late summer, super early fall garden tour started. First, we're gonna walk on over to the tomato patch. Now, this is the second time I've grown tomatoes in this particular area of my garden. And uh, I'm starting a kind of like late summer, early fall tomato garden. Now, if you are new here, I live in Florida, zone nine. So if you're up north, you might be thinking, why is she starting tomatoes right now? That is why it is still incredibly hot here and it will definitely be warm enough to grow tomatoes through probably the month of November. I do have a few different tomatoes I'm growing right now. Now keep in mind, all of my tomato plants were started on the exact same day. I started all the seeds at the exact same time. And what's interesting is some of them have responded really well and some of them have not. In this front row, this is the Sheboygan tomatoes. Now I've never grown the Sheboygan tomatoes. Some of them have responded super well. As you can see, this one right here is getting to be a really good size. While the ones next to them are kind of half the size. I'm also growing the Cherokee, the pineapple, the San Marzano tomatoes, which I love as well as a few other random varieties. Now I do no dig, no till. So this is all just mulch that we just continue to pour on top of the ground every single season, followed by compost. And I'm doing a like single string method paired with a Florida weave for supporting my tomato plants. So I have a whole video on how I did this uh, particular trellis system. It was so, so easy. I'm here next to my watermelon patch. This is the strawberry watermelon, so I don't want to damage this particular watermelon. They are growing very well with little to no intervention from me. I hardly water this watermelon patch and uh, the actual plant itself looks so healthy and there's tons of little melons all over the place. Now I'm really excited to be growing the particular strawberry watermelon variety because I've never grown it before. So anytime I grow something new, it's a really exciting feeling. Back behind me was the Dixie Queen watermelons. I don't know if you could see that like kind of naked piece of soil up there. And that particular plant has run its cycle. So what I did is about a month or so after I start those, that particular plant started, I started the seeds here for the strawberry watermelons. And now because I staggered it that way, I'll have some more watermelons to harvest for a late summer, early fall. Right here is my sugar pie pumpkin cattle panel tunnel which I, it's probably one of the most exciting things for me growing on right now in the garden. My hope is to grow enough sugar pie pumpkins to make at least one pumpkin pie. That's all I ask. But my biggest dream would be to grow a ton of sugar pie pumpkins this year. What I'm doing is being really proactive with all of my winter squash, as you will see in the rest of the video and I am making sure that they are well protected through the last of the summer heat because the bugs are still out there and they're still really thriving this time of the year. And what I mean by that is I'll come out here and I spray uh, BT every like week or so or whenever I see a problem on all of my winter squash plants to protect them from uh, caterpillars the caterpillar invasions that are constantly happening. And that's just an organic bacteria that kills the caterpillars. What I've also been doing is applying fish fertilizer almost weekly to every two weeks. Uh, I water the entire garden with the Alaskan fish fertilizer. And that, let me tell you, does wonders. The Alas Alaskan fish fertilizer, if you've never used it in your garden, you will never need uh, regular chemical fertilizers ever again because the Alaskan fish fertilizer just, it does everything and more that you'll ever need. So that's what I'm trying to do regularly so that the plants are really strong and can help fight off any type of uh, pest invasion naturally is just by keeping the plants strong. 
So that's my course of action. Behind me is my papaya tree, one of my papaya trees. I just planted this tree not that long ago. And as you can see, it's absolutely loaded with fruits. I have peppers in this particular bed. I've got shishito peppers, Tabasco peppers, Cubanel peppers, uh, corno de torno, uh, pepperoncini peppers in this particular bed, as well as more peppers through the entire garden. Right next to the peppers in this bed, I have my cattle panel arches, which you'll see I have three cattle panel arches meeting each one of my raised garden beds, and a candy roaster squash right here. This particular plant, I know it's going to do good because the leaves are gigantic. I grew candy roaster squash in the spring and it did not look this healthy and green with this big of leaves. So I'm super proud of the progress that it's making so far. And I'm hoping that I will have a lot of candy roaster squash because in the spring, I only got one. So all I can do is do better every season, but look at how amazing this plant is doing. I planted all my winter squash seeds on the same day at the same time along with you guys a few weeks ago. Some have done really well and what I can't understand is why my spaghetti squash is looking so sad. And it was looking way more sad a few days ago, but I started to really make sure they were watered every single day during the, those high temperatures, give them for fish fertilizer, and I'm seeing new growth. But I can't for the life of me understand why this one is doing so poorly compared to like the these other winter squash, as you can see behind me. Now next to my sad spaghetti squash that I have not totally given up on yet is a few of my pepper plants. Now I am planting my peppers in these like kind of fabric bags this year. I find that peppers really thrive in a pot. So if you don't have a bunch of space, then peppers are ideal for you. You can have a really great patio garden with peppers and they will produce a lot. So I've got the Cubanelle, here a sweet banana, tam, jalapeno, serrano peppers, a lot of different pepper options. And if you are a current subscriber, you will know that I have tried so hard to grow peppers and it's just not until now where I've made it work and uh, I'm so excited about the progress that they're making so far. Now this cattle panel arch is my butternut squash. I had amazing success with butternut squash a few seasons ago in spring. I had so many butternut squash, I did not know what to do with them. It was very exciting. Now, if you live in Florida and you are trying to think of winter squash that might work for you, I don't know what the reasoning is, but butternut squash responds really well to this particular climate. You know, I don't know why, because I'll have some uh, winter squash, such as like my winter luxury pumpkins, or um, my uh, sugar pie pumpkins, and they will always succumb to heat and pests and disease, where the butternut squash is just living its best life out here. So I have little butternuts growing right now, which is uh, very exciting. They're doing their thing. So what's super exciting about my butternut squash, you know, they're just showing off and just trying to beat all the other winter squash in my garden is I'm already seeing some female flowers. But the bad thing is that there's no male flowers in sight, which I don't think I've ever had that happen where it's the female flowers showing up first followed by the male. Usually it's more male flowers than female. So I'm hoping that a male flower will show up so that these little female squash can be pollinated. As you can see there. In here so they are definitely doing their thing doing it so well I'm having to come out here and trellis every like every day or so I will do like garden inspections I come out here with the kids I water the plants and I just every once in a while will walk up and you know trellis the plants to the cattle panel arch and it's just kind of like my daily garden work so like this one's got to be moved up oh yeah see look another female Next to that cattle panel arch, I have another garden bed. I believe this one is 12 feet by four feet long, 
I have to look at it again. But I have the four garden beds all attaching with three cattle panel arches in the middle. It leaves me a whole bunch of space to not only vertically grow those winter squash that take up more space, but also grow things in the middle. So I've got some different bean plants here. I believe these are all just the pinto beans or the black beans. I'd have to go back and look at that video with more of my pepper plants because again, I've got more plans to put different crops in this middle area. So right now the pepper plants are just kind of, you know, taking up space strategically. Next to all of that is my winter luxury pumpkins. So with my winter luxury pumpkins, I had a really potentially successful uh, plant in the spring where they were growing all over the cattle panel arches and I had a lot of little tiny pumpkins and they just, they were no match against all of the caterpillars. And that's why this season I'm being a lot more strategic about really mindfully applying like neem oil and BT and keeping them healthy with a fish fertilizer. That way they can combat any type of pest invasion because the plant itself wants to do well. It's just a lot when it comes to the pest pressure. And I'm hoping that because we're a little bit later in the season, the pest pressure will have gotten a lot better. So these are the winter luxury pumpkins and my goal is to have them going over these arches. They are an almost fiberless pumpkin variety and they're really like a high-end chef's choice type pumpkin. This bed, I think it's, it's the very first bed in our whole garden. It's always just kind of giving me no problems. It's my herb bed. We've got a huge oregano plant back there that it doesn't look like it's doing very good because it went to seed, but now it's starting to recover itself. And then next to it, I have just some, some basil right here. So as you walk through the garden, I have my loofah plant on one of my cattle panel arches. This is the first time I've grown loofahs. And I can say this particular plant has thrived in absolute neglect and heat and lack of water. It did phenomenal through the entire summer. I started these seeds in, uh, in the spring and I'm just now getting to a point where I can start harvesting loofahs, making sponges from them. Like what could be more exciting to a gardener than growing your own sponges? So now that I realize just how successful loofahs are like in this particular climate, I'm probably going to create a cattle panel, like a double tunnel, like I have done for my, my sugar pie pumpkins and grow a double next year because these plants have tried their best to just grow all over the place. This one uh, cattle panel arch is not enough for how big these plants can get. Now I only have two loofah plants, one on each side. So I will be making a whole video on growing harvesting and making loofah sponges coming up here pretty soon. But what you'll want is them to get to this point where they're just totally brown and uh, like hollow feeling. They'll feel like they'll go from being really heavy <laughs> to feeling like air. So at first I was like, oh my gosh, my loofah sponges are dying. And then I realized because I'd never grown before that yes, that is exactly what you want. You want them to be as brown and hollow as possible to make your life even easier. Especially if you are in a warmer climate, just leave those things on there as long as possible. But if you live in a colder climate and you're trying to rush your harvest, you'll have to put a little bit more work into harvesting them. And then next to my loofah cattle panel arch is a flower bed followed by another flower bed. So this particular flower bed has not done very well. I don't know why, but the one, well, probably because it doesn't get as much sun, but, but this flower bed is doing much, much better. I've got sunflowers, marigolds, cosmos, just a, a big variety of different flowers in here. It was my chaos bed. I just dumped like a ton of seeds in here. Welcome to the part of the garden that gives me some of the most joy. Another papaya tree with more banana trees. Now I think at this time I've got six, seven, eight, eight banana trees, two papaya trees. 
and they're all doing really well. Now this is my natural shade canopy area. I'm gonna plant, or I'm gonna put a cement table as soon as I can find a good one on Facebook Marketplace in the middle of my banana forest. That way I can enjoy natural shade at any time of the day and be out in my garden, get some relief from the sun, drink some water, go through my seeds, you know. So that's why I planted these all in the very middle of my garden. And then they're also providing some strategic relief from the sun for some of these beds over here. So I can plant some more sensitive crops in the summertime or when it's really hot out like cucumbers and things like that behind them. So they'll get a little bit of relief. But what I also want to start branching out into is growing some coffee trees as well as some cacao trees if I can get my hands at any of those seeds. And uh, I know some of you guys have recommended the Jamaican sorrel. I don't know if I'm saying that right. That it's kind of like a hibiscus edible plant that I want to plant uh, within the garden as well. And then I'm going to also get started on some strawberry patches really soon. So that's some of the plans that I have coming up here for more of that like kind of permaculture fruit tree expansion into the garden. So in my zone, zone nine, the weed pressure, the pest pressure is, uh, cannot be understated in the summertime. I know in most other parts of America, like up north, it's, a, it's your most ideal, just like that is your time of the year to grow. And I'll see everybody's beautiful gardens just looking wonderful with all their winter squash and delicate plants growing while our gardens are just looking crusty and uh, like they've just been burnt to death by the sun. So I do think it's important to mention the what hasn't been utilized this year is actually benefiting me in the long run. I have turned off about 50% of the garden or laid it to rest this year. As you can see right here, this garden bed is covered with just cardboard. This garden bed was covered with some, a tarp that I've recently started kind of messing with. That way the weed control is not something I feel like I have to continue to come out here and pull the weeds for. Instead, what I did is I opened up the parts of the garden that I knew would be the least stressful to manage and the most enjoyable because gardening is not meant to be a source of stress. So as you can see, a lot of these beds are only needing just a teensy bit of time to revitalize them and be ready for a fall garden. Now, last summer, what I did was I kept all the beds open and it was a constant source of coming out here and pulling weeds for an hour at a time. And then like the next day they were all back. Where this year I just was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. Like with the bed behind me, I did a no dig garden method where it was full of weeds. I just laid some cardboard on top, laid a really heavy amount of mulch on top, followed by soil, and look at how well that's doing. It's been thriving for a few months now. So I did that to just a few beds and I planted in them. And then the ones that I wasn't ready to plant in yet or maintain, I just covered with a tarp. And now going into the fall, when I'm ready to start uh, bringing my transplants out here, all my plant starts I'm going to start pretty soon, I'm gonna have beds that are mostly de-weeded and ready just to start planting in. Instead of having had maintained beds that were unmanageable through the whole entire summer and have nothing to show for. So that's why this particular summer, I feel, although it looks a little bit messy, probably to some people, and it is, I feel like this is the best summer garden we've ever done, just because I knew my limits in the summertime and what I was able to actually do and how aggressive the plants, uh, the weeds can be. And I feel like our fall garden is going to be that much better just because I kind of pared it down in the summertime. If you are considering growing a fall garden, definitely do that, especially if you live in a warmer climate because it's going to be such a rewarding time. I always refer to it as almost like, especially if you live in Florida, our second spring because you can grow pretty much anything, all the sensitive weather crops 
as well as tomatoes and peppers and heat loving crops. So this, we're about to approach one of the best times of the year for gardening. And thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. My name is Shelby again. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like until next time. Bye.